What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Kind of Funny Podcast here for the week right before Halloween. Can't wait to talk to Joey about night teeth. But before we get to that, oh, yeah, the man sitting to my right is the second best baby blues of all time, Mr. Tim Geddes. And of course, the lady sitting to my left is uh, Christmas during Halloween time, Joey Noel. Joey, uh-huh. did you watch Night Teeth? <laughs> no, completely <laughs> forgot about it until you said it. <laughs> good, because I, I was going to owe you an apology. I was like, Joey, this oh, is good. the thing we're going to watch this weekend. We're going to watch Night Teeth. This movie uh-huh. looks great. Me and D got 15 minutes into it, and I'm like, this is a, yet another. You got me again, Netflix, with your Netflix originals. Tim, you know how sometimes Netflix originals, you're like, oh, this could be the sleeper hit of the year, like to, to all the boys I love before, or the Kissing Booth 1 and 2, maybe not 3. Night Teeth looked great. I get 15 minutes and I'm like, this is how did they make this movie so boring? I'm going to need a uh, uh, explanation of what the hell night teeth is. It's okay. Perfect. Thank you, Tim, for setting me up for this. <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Of course, on the ones and twos today, uh, the nitro rifle himself taking a little break, taking, taking a step back from having his image out there, right? He just wants his voice to be heard, and he's actually running the show today because Kevin, unfortunately, is still fighting water moccasins. Water snakes <laughs> have attacked. <laughs> they have attacked his body and his home, and he is fighting them off left and right. Uh, we've asked Joey to help, and Joey just said, uh, no, thank you, sir. Uh, Night Teeth, for all, for all of you asking out there, is a Netflix original, has a great trailer. It's about a kid who gets talked into driving his brother's car, like his, uh, his uh, car service around, and he picks up two fem- like smoking hot female vampires who take him around. And it's like, remember the movie Collateral? Starring um, uh, Tom Cruise and Jamie Foxx. Yeah. It's collateral mm. if Tom Cruise was two hot vampire women. Got it. Oh, shit. So they, yeah. Which I'm like, oh, that's a great concept. But about 30 minutes in this movie, I'm like, oh, man, they just fundamentally dropped the ball with this film. That's 100%. a bummer. It is I was a hoping it bummer. was going to be like a Jennifer's Body, like cult classic y Halloween thing. I've never seen Jennifer's Body. I've never body. seen it either. And I oh, feel man. like I'm missing out. I think you are. And I know that it got a lot of shit at the time. And like, well, she had really a lot of controversy it. surrounding her at the time of making Jennifer's body. Cause remember it was like that whole thing where she had the blow up with Michael Bay and he tried to excommunicate her from Hollywood. And then like Jennifer's body was like, I think kind of her comeback movie. Maybe I could be wrong. Not so much comeback as much as just next step. Cause that was yeah. 2008. If I remember correctly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh no. 2009. 2009. Yeah. Also, that was, so that was right after revenge of the fallen. Completely randomly, Megan Fox in Night Teeth. For well, like yeah, that's scene. what I was like hoping. Yeah. I was oh, like, oh, what? they're gonna like make her. She's like, gonna be an ode minutes. to it. She's oh. in it for five minutes, and I kid you not. And I am not one of those human beings that rails on Megan Fox. I actually think she's a fairly competent actress. But there's phoning it in, and then there's like not knowing what the movie is about, and she is like a step to the left of both of those things in this movie. Like she I... is not even close to having a character in this film. It's great. I want to give two shout outs to Megan Fox. One, she was really nice to Joey, and I appreciate people that are really nice to Joey. And I'm just so happy that somehow my life led to Joey and Megan Fox at all communicating with each other. That's just fantastic. It is uh, a wild story. You throw DJ Khaled in there, and you're just like, what the fuck happened? What the you know? fuck happened for LG OLED? Like, what a dream scenario that is just so bizarre. But then there's the other side of it where it's like, you know, Megan Fox was such a moment in time. She was such in, a moment uh, in time. The, the, like, 2010s. Transformers. Yeah. Uh, and all of that stuff, right? Uh, and then it just kind of, like, she kind of became a meme at some point. But I love that we're seeing this resurgence of people where they push through the meme ability and come back as their own memes even stronger they kind of yes. own their meme ship and like her and joey which one is it chloe courtney which one uh what are the kardashians? Court- courtney kardashian you gotta tell me what she did which one the one dating travis barker yeah yes that's courtney so they, they have a whole squad right now because he's Cause dating he's with machine gun kelly or, exactly like, yeah yeah and uh they did this photo shoot together that like oh, inspired so inspired a nation in many ways. Like it, it inspired Gia so much. Gia hadn't done her nails in like 20 years <laughs> or something. She saw this photo shoot. She's like, I have to get my nails done today. And I'm like, that is really weird that these pictures would I, inspire wait, you. Why, that wait, I want to know what the, I want know what these pictures are. Yeah. Why, uh, why, why are it. we talking about like, what was there something specifically about the nails that looked really, really good? It, well, I thought Machine is, Gun Kelly had like pearls stapled to his forehead in one of the pictures from like the. the I, I don't think we're talking thing. about the same pictures. No, yeah, okay. no, no, no. We're so it was about- a campaign for uh, Kim Kardashian's like Skims like bodywear shapewear line, and she got both of them to model for it. 
Oh, interesting. I'm putting it in assets. I'm Tim, you bring up this just like the People magazine. I don't, you... I... <laughs> I don't <know>. <laughs> <laughs> While you bring that up, Andy, Tim, you mentioned a very good point, right? Where that mm-hmm. people have Megan Fox has been through through it all, right? Has come. And we're very. I'm very happy that she's come out the other side and is finding good work these days and, and finding good projects. Uh, personally, because I'm a Megan Fox fan. But you said people used to be memes. Right. And now they're taking control of their own memes. And that's something that really hits close to home here because we never even tried to be the first thing. We just went straight to the second thing. Right. Like, and yeah. then we started, this is it right here. Okay. So we have this pulled up for audio listeners. This is, I don't, who, is that Megan Fox? Who's the other? Oh, that's, oh, this is Courtney. Courtney Kardashian's in the back. Megan Fox is in the front. And they've got very high waisted underwear on and nothing else. <clears throat> and they're very bronzered. That does yeah. not look like Courtney Kardashian. <laughs> There's a, more if you scroll down. I'm really scared, Joe. I'll be honest with you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, they're, they're all, it's technically safe for work uh, images, but like, yeah, we can stop here. Not safe for apples, this. though. Not safe for yeah, apples. No, that apple, apples. 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 That apples going through. I wonder right where now. they would put uh, <laughs> apples in the ranking, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't even know. But first off, if you're gonna pick an apple for it, don't pick that 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 random witch apple. Red that's the, delicious. That's the, no, they're no, terrible. some bullshit. They're terrible apple. apples. Red delicious is. Oh my god, don't even uh, get me started. Before, basic before we apple. go too far into the apple stuff, I, I don't want to get away from what is undoubtedly the greatest photo shoot of all time. I love that they didn't just take a couple of pictures. There are like about a hundred pictures from this photo shoot in like seven different outfits and like a bunch of different non outfits and all of it is just like <laughs> the art design, just the level of care and precision that was put into making sure that these, every single one of these photos meant as much as it possibly can to as many people as possible. Dude, I, I just, I really want to give Tim, him a shout out. Tim, listen, listen, we, how many times have we done this podcast together? If you had to think, if you had to hundreds, guess, hundreds, <laughs> literally, hundreds. literally this is episode what 200 and something. We're almost at the, we're almost, yeah. We know what we're selling on this podcast, right? We're selling a hell of a good time. We're selling, take a break from your life. Listen to us talk about apples, right? Kick back. When it comes, when it kick back, Andy, it's going to be Andy. It's going to be Joey. It's going to be me. It's going to be Tim. It's going to be one Snowbike Mike also just chilling there. Snowbike Mike say, what's up? What's up? (laughs) We know the vibe we're selling on this podcast. You better damn well believe that when Kim Kardashian and Kourtney Kardashian got together and they hired Megan Fox, they know what they're selling. They were like, get as many pictures of these two human beings together with an apple. This is going to sell a lot of spanks or whatever the fuck this product is. <laughs> no, but I mean, like, I love it because they there's a whole bunch of pro products and stuff going in. But I'm not kidding. When Gia literally saw this fucking thing, it was like, I got to get my nails done. And Dude. Joey, you saw the nails. She yeah. had the green nails. She had the green nails and it they was, looked great. I was like, <laughs> you don't normally have your nails done. Like, and she was like, yeah, I know, but I saw this photo shoot and I just had to do it. It's like Josie and the Pussycats where it's like in the, in the music, there's the subliminal messaging and yeah. that's, there must be something behind all of those images that just say, I need green nails. Nick Scarpino. Can I confide something in you? Cause we're in the circle oh, of trust. No, right? Here we go. It's just us and oh. the, mm-hmm. the Patreon people out there. The good people that we love very much. What's up Patreon people. I'm getting a, I'm getting a pedicure. Ooh. It's like my third oh, shit. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. I'm very excited. But I've got uh, uh because I've been doing a lot of walking, I got a lot of calluses on my feet. And Dee was mm-hmm. like, you know, they got this thing called the callus buster where they take like a thing and they like saw your foot and they do like a little foot massage. And I was like, I'll try it. So I tried it a month ago. And I'm like, I kind of dig, I'm kind of digging nail culture. I you know what I mean? I love this for you. I'm so happy this that is, you're this is a it. thing that I have purposely stayed away from. Uh largely because Sometimes my wife, this is going to shock you, Andy, needs a break from me. Sometimes no. she needs to just go no someplace way. where she can't hear my voice. <laughs> but she <laughs> fucked up. She brought me to one when I was in a moment of vulnerability, and now I like it. And now, and there's like a Starbucks close to this thing, so I can bring oh. it in there. Oh, man. See, is it one that serves you champagne? What, what's the full process there? With, with... The, the, this sounds like Nick's dream because we infamously know that Nick loves getting haircuts just so we can sit there and Tim, talk to people. Tim, I pampers. almost, I tried, now, I almost tried, to, tried to get one today, but we ran out of time. We ran out of time. <laughs> <laughs> but I love that you found a new thing that you now just get to sit there and have people clean you in some way and you just talk to them. What Listen, kind of um, I, what, what I know kind that. Of, I, what's up? What's up? Uh, I want to say, what kind of lies do we think Nick is spinning? Oh my at god. The barbershop or the nail salon. Like, do you think he's do you think he acts like a different person completely just to have fun? Or is it more of a I'm going to 
completely over exaggerate who I am and you know what I do for a living. Like I like to imagine that Tim said or Nick pretends that he's like a pilot sometimes or something. You know? oh. I would not well, be surprised if Nick was like Johnny Ace at one place and some <laughs> other alter ego at another. I, I haven't thought that far ahead for it right now. I'm just trying not to screw this up for myself, truth be told. <laughs> so like this is like this is the place my wife goes to to get her nails done. She's a, a known entity there, a known quantity oh, there, as wow. we like to say. I'm not trying to screw this up for her, but Andy, give me two more, and I'm going to walk in like I own this place. I and will if you didn't say, know, ladies, <laughs> it's real, real quick before you get to the intro here, I will say that, uh, you know, Nick, you used to have, I don't know if you still go to it, but you used to have a, a barber, like a specific guy still that you would always go to. Okay, oh, well, guy, Eugene, I, went to, I went to him once. And I immediately, I was like, I'm never doing this again. Uh, but that's just a personal thing for me. Uh, I don't like the experience of sitting there and it taking forever like and having conversations. Much, I, I don't, I just don't like that you whole thing. I want to be it. in and out and just like shave, shave, call it a day. Right. Uh, but I immediately was like, I totally understand why Nick loves this guy. Like, because he might be the only person that is a bigger personality than you. Uh, in that oh, he's great. He's great. Every time, every time I talk to him, he tells me about another one of his kids. It's insane. And I'm like, he has so many kids. <laughs> I was like, I, uh, I was like, wait, is this the one you just had? He goes, no, 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 man. This is my old, my second oldest. And I was like, how many kids do you, I think he has like, I swear to God, like six or it's seven. It's clear kids. that he's oh forgetting gosh. who you are. And he's also yeah. embellishing his and story and he's lying to you and saying like, oh yeah, my seven kids. Like, I thought you said you had five. Oh, right. No, but two have been added. Like he kind of remembers like mid sentence. Fuck. I'm busted here. You got me. <laughs> but isn't that what this is for? Isn't it like, can't you just like, I don't want him to remember things about me. I like the idea of starting new every single time. Cause I don't have to think of shit to say, how mm -hmm. are you doing? Good. You're going to go up to the snow this, this, this season. Probably not. I don't ski so much anymore. After I hit 41, my knee hurts a little bit. Oh man, that's crazy. We talk about your kids. You rub my face. You cut my hair. I'm out. I gave you a 20% tip. You make me feel special. I'm out. That's where it is, ladies and gentlemen. If you didn't know, this is the kind of funny podcast where each and every week, three, sometimes four, sometimes five best friends gather on these podcast mics, each just to talk about what's happening in our daily lives and what we're doing this weekend, whether or not we survived the Sky River or whatever the hell it was they were calling this Sky massive River. flood what we just had. It was, was, like, was bonkers. Bonkers. Uh, if you want to support this podcast, you may do so in a number of ways. One, you can go over to youtube.com slash kind of funny and subscribe to our channel if you're listening to this audio only you can subscribe to those amazing podcast feeds uh we do a lot of podcasts on this everything ranging from video games to uh reviewing movies ranking right now we're doing the spider-man movies again and let me tell you if you've got seven or eight hours a week uh, extra <laughs> you gotta go over there and listen to me and anthony carboni wax poetic about the, the ins and outs of the sam raimi spider-verse uh of course if you've got a couple extra bucks to give go over to patreon.com slash kind of funny throw us a couple bucks uh you get this content uh ad free and you get access to our dope ass patreon only post show which we're going to do in uh, just a little over an hour from now uh i want to give a shout out to our patreon producers pranksky uh delaney twinning and julian the gluten-free gamer you three are the best of the best and this is the last week that you're sponsoring this podcast until next month and i hope to see at least one of your names on there because i like saying them because i've said them a month straight and i finally got them right i think uh <laughs> today we're brought to you by trade coffee uncommon goods and me undies but we'll talk about that just a bit later now back to what we were talking about. I totally forgot. That was a talking. great intro, Nick. Thank you. You killed it. Nailed that was it. easily the best intro you have ever done. Congratulations. Was, wow. As Mike said before we started, I'm in the pocket right now. <laughs> He's in the pocket. In There's the a pocket. lot of vibes going into this one where it's like, what, what's this going to be? But my favorite thing is uh, you, Kevin. Kevin's out because he's battling the, the Sky Rivers or whatever Nick called it. Uh, but I love that Andy's, Andy's running the show. <laughs> and like he was like totally cool, totally confident. It was all good setting up. But there was a moment he broke where, <laughs> where we're all like just like talking to him as if we talked to Kevin before the show, which is like you know, way too aggressively. And like, you can just hear Andy just being like, uh Oh, I got it. Don't got it. Got it. No, don't got it. We're live. No, we're not live. Yeah. Is the intro playing? Why is it playing five times? <laughs> it's the best. It is. It's one of those moments where like, you know, obviously Andy stepping up, uh, to, to help produce this show right now. And it's one of those moments where I had to look really hard inwardly. Right. Because here's, there's a, there's a number of different things happening right now. One, I got good sleep last night too. We just got a great vibe overall with this cast going into this podcast. So I'm like, sky's the limit. My brain's firing all cylinders. But the, 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 the differentiator in this one, right? The wild card, as they say, is we're getting ready to start. Andy's setting shit up. Snowbike Mike drops in audio only. Pops in. And when Mike's here, 
I feel like I need to make it worth his time. I got to take it up a notch with Mikey here. I got to impress him, right? Oh, I want to get the invite back Michael to late Scott. night gaming, right? I want, I want, you know what I mean? I want to like, I want him to be like, Nick is like secretly like, he'll like, he'll tell you that Andy's the coolest, but secretly he's like, Nick is the fucking coolest guy. I kind of funny, right? So of course, what am I going to do to him? I don't have much I can offer. I start picking on Andy as he's going through <laughs> the most frustrating part of his day. I'm like, I don't know what it is about me that digs deep and just starts fucking with him, but I did it and it was fun. And I do it again. Nick, there probably is next a- week. Nick, there's an episode of The Office where Michael Scott is kind of being hooked up with one of Pam's friends, maybe her sister. I forget exactly who it is, but he doesn't realize it in the moment, Nick. He's just kind of like being himself, totally cool and everything's going great. And then it dawns on him. Somebody kind of hints to him, hey, you know, I think she's into you. And then he goes, oh, my God, this is a date. Holy cow. I didn't realize this. So he walks out to his car opens his trunk gets a little like beret hat like a little news a news what do they call newsboys hats tries to be the hat yeah. and then immediately thinks he needs to turn it on and it really reminds me of you that he walks back in there and he's suddenly trying to do this thing and everybody's like no you were doing fine why are you doing this <laughs> it's i i respect that andy i respect <laughs> and i appreciate that tim what is this thing you just slacked us here so uh, I, I saw Alfredo's sister. Um, was, I was following her on Instagram, and I saw she was posting pictures of her. You know how in the last couple of years they've been doing these like Instagram pop up experiences yeah, 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 everywhere, yeah. Um, and there's a lot of them that are kind of like, oh, you can visit like a remake of the Friends set or whatever. Uh, they recently did one for The Office, and uh, she got to go. It's in Chicago, and it's cool as hell. Like it's just straight this up. You get to go to the Whoa. office, and uh, uh, this you can looks go down. so dope. Go down, Andy. Yeah, there's a slideshow here. They have a ton of like so many references to the show, like just hidden throughout, and like like you get to pose for pictures and stuff. And I'm like, this is so fucking cool. And I love that we're in a world at a time that like this is not only possible Ryan's but happening closet. and cool. <laughs> this is this is awesome. This is actually a really cool idea. I mean, they went all out on this. First off, shout out to them having this like 19. 19- 90s tv playing episodes of the office in this conference room on slide seven that's amazing the beat farm wow also uh, chili (laughs) chili. (laughs) this gives me a really good idea uh if you look at a slide eight uh they have vending machines i think we should have vending machines in the new office in the new studio just make some of that cash (laughs) <laughs> we'd, make, we'd make like okay. we'd probably make like two thousand dollars off of Snowbike Mike alone. <laughs> this is a great idea. Yeah. Now that it's, it's it's us here, how uh-huh. do we make vending machines to capitalize off the rest of the team? Oh, <laughs> well, well, I mean, awesome. Kevin alone would that would be, yeah, that would that's... fund the vending machine, right? <laughs> well, here's what we have to do: we have to have a vending machine. What is the product that Kevin can't live with? Corn dogs. Yes. Milkshakes. Yeah. Milkshakes. We have to have a milkshake. No, machine. I feel like milkshakes are too far. It's just more aesthetically because he knows that I love that it. I just love the idea of little corn dogs <laughs> in the little turnstile things. <laughs> That's so I, hold funny. On. Guys, I'm sorry that I just keep grabbing things and running away. <laughs> Who but cares? I, Go. I, this is what I, we've definitely told this story before, but I'm going to tell it again. Tell it again, dude. Every, so there used to be uh, vending machines at IGN. There probably still are. But when we were there, there were vending machines, and it was a quarter for everything. No matter what you got in these things, it was a quarter. And that was cool because it meant like a can of soda is a quarter, but also a packet of Pop-Tarts is a quarter. Awesome. <laughs> and it's just like, yo, it. this is you fucking know. dope. But it also meant that the cup of noodles were a quarter. And oh. I kid you fucking not. We had a morning meeting every single day at 10 a.m. Every day. All hands. Everyone had to be there. Mm-hmm. Every day, Sean Finnegan Sean would Finnegan. come in into the meeting. Not at 10. It would usually be at like 10.03. 10. No. 10 05 while, everyone, while the meeting's yeah. happening walks it like he's been in the building because he's clearly coming from the cafeteria with a fucking cup of noodles and he's just slurping that shit at 10 in the morning Every and time. it was the most that destructive a- thing ever and that's like not a quiet food to eat no, no. and he was not quiet eating it it's an all hands meeting we're all standing up it's not like you can hide when you walk it we're in a big circle like standing up and it's quiet unless you're talking and that would be the thing. Now, t- Tim's obviously was very responsible because usually me and Alexis would walk in about five, six minutes after Sean Finnegan because I just I hated any meetings at IGN. I just refused to go to a lot of them. But God bless Sean, Sean Finnegan, dude. That dude is 
he just lived he just lived the life. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the threat of him sleeping at his desk <laughs> is the best thing ever. I would do I, I would do corn dogs for Kevin. I think we could figure out some sort of I'll tell you exactly for sort of variant thing here joe maybe there's, are they it. are there like milkshake it's candies it. or something well i'm sure we could get like protein milkshakes or something like that that kevin could get that would, that would upset his stomach extra um right. if we also had brownies and chai lattes i'm not going to point fingers at yeah. who would eat all of those but you wouldn't be able to keep them stocked that's the problem no, no 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 if we had a vending machine just for brownies and another vending machine for starbucks iced chai lattes oh god First off, Mike would probably not even eat them. He'd probably still order them from Starbucks. I think he just gets off on having them delivered to his house. It's like a power trip that he has going on. Am I right, Nick. Mike? Yeah, I love that. I love that. I love that. I'll tell you what. My local Starbucks can't keep enough Frappuccinos in the fridge. So there's your challenge. Nick, mm-hmm. you stock some fruit roll-ups individually, charge them for 15 bucks. Mike will buy those motherfuckers. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like we'll do that. We'll have another vending machine that's just Mountain Dew game fuel, but the rare ones. Like the oh, one that's like yeah. it's like pineapple and hibiscus. Oh my god! It's like god. nobody wants this except for Andy. Andy wants to drink it, but he wants to drink it because he likes when people see him in pain on streams. He's like, I don't like this thing. No, and he spe- just keeps going. Nick, speaking of which, there's I, I I don't know how public this is. I don't know whether I'm breaking any embargoes or anything like that. You're fine. But there's a pineapple Mountain Dew pushing. available, I believe, Ooh. at Target, and it is. Um, it's exclusive to the target, which I love. I love when stores do their own exclusive things. Like when you can, oh, that you get the Taylor Swift, uh, CD cover here, but you get the cooler one. If you go to target, like that's what I love when stores do that. Um, they have a, I believe it's target or maybe Kmart, but there's a pineapple exclusive. Is it Maui burst? That's the there's one, Joe. That's Maui the one. Burst. And I, I, I really think that maybe the do dome. Uh, makes an appearance because like we need to re i would love to re-rank the mountain dews and just feel like shit for at least two days because all yeah. the sugar we're in taking Solid two days yeah too much it's like that perfect combination of too much caffeine and too much sugar that that just throws your endocrine system into like whack yep so Joey, did you just like that there i did let me see this thing I I love all of this. Oh yeah, here we go. Maui burst Maui pineapple. Burst. Oh, oh god, gosh. even the we even the can already. design looks disgusting. <laughs> Do with the yeah, blast. This is, this is from January flavor. 2020, which is a while ago. Them. Granted, still selling them. <laughs> they're they're new, on it's sale. New to us, Nick. You know, if it's a rerun, it's and I haven't seen it, it's new to me. You know, absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely, my friend. Oh my god, you just showed a picture of Sean Paul, uh, which, which reminded me <laughs> of Paul. Pitbull, obviously. Um, and last week. The WWE had a, a pay-per-view in Saudi Arabia, the Crown Royale, the, right. like their annual thing they do. It's a really big show, but nobody wants to do it because there's a lot of political things with Saudi Arabia. It's a complicated mess. Right. So what essentially ends up happening is WWE is just like, we will pay the legends like Undertaker and shit so much money just to show up to this fucking thing. Mm-hmm. So they did that. But the Undertaker, Undertaker's retired, but they still had the Undertaker. So what they have the Undertaker do? The fucking Undertaker, you guys. The like, but one of the probably the biggest legend in WWE history. He comes out, he, he does his entrance. The musical artist. It takes like 10 minutes of him doing the whole do 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 yeah. He had some words this time, and those were, ladies and gentlemen, Pitbull. <laughs> no way. God I fucking kid you not. I need to find the video because he does it, and it's just like, ladies and gentlemen, Pitbull. Yay, yeah, yay, yeah, yay. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> Don't stop is the there, party. That's so weird. <laughs> is there no place that Pitbull isn't? He's Mr. It's worldwide. worldwide. Man, it's like, it's in the name. I love it. Pitbull is a guy that I know very little about, but I feel like has just been famous my entire life. Yeah, I mean, he's been having hits forever. I couldn't he's tell you in, one Pitbull He's been hit, in almost though. every single Fast and Furious movie soundtrack, which when you think about that, like, Nick, that guess, is Nick, guess how old he is. Of Fast and Furious. Guess how old he is? Yeah. Ooh, good question. I would say 52. 23. I think he's 40. <laughs> 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 he's 40. started singing when he was four. He's 40. Have you guys 40? ever seen pictures of Pitbull with hair? No, I want no, to see. No, I don't think there. so. I got you. Don't. Is that worry. a thing? This was a TikTok that went around earlier this year, but like I just pulled up the article of it. Oh not what, not what you would expect. 
Top right. Look at the oh, top yeah. right. Oh, God. Or it's not left. good, yeah. though. He looks like oh, when Jared Leto was in that left? movie, the Panic Room movie. Oh, top he left. He always no reminds way. me of the guy. Yeah. The kid from Outside Providence. A little bit. Outside Providence. I don't know. No, I'm trying that. to think of another movie this kid was in. I want to say he was like the... That looks like Zac Efron on the right. I'm sorry. I mean, that is Zac Efron on the right, I think. Is it not? Is that Pipple with full, a full head of hair? Yeah. That's yeah. Like, Wait, he's got that much hair? Apparently. Why is he not? Why Why does he shave it? That's, that's sacrilege. Because here's the thing, Nick. Like, Yeah, you can clearly see. He's got a hairline. Like, yeah. I don't, How often do you think he has to shave to keep it that shiny? Oh, like every three days, maybe. This looks like Zac Efron. What the hell's going on? Do you this think that he's real? Sort of, I don't you, think. Right? No, that's not real. <laughs> <laughs> that's not real. There's no way he's got this much hair. <laughs> Holy it, shit. That's the kind of thing that I really just, I, I find offensive. Like, as a person who is, 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 is so just excited. desperately trying to keep his hair. When people have hair and they decide to shave it, it is blasphemous it is an insult to everything that i stand for god gave you good genetics and you just what are you because at a convenience you're just going to shave your head it's an embarrassment of riches nick it really it is really the is people hideous. that collect cars and there's people in the streets that are poor and would love a mode of transportation you got jay leno with his fucking 90 classic vehicles and his garage that's probably worth more than you know the bottom 40 percent combined it's just it's embarrassing nick and it equal to that is again shaving your head if you have hair 100 percent. those are those are <laughs> the only other thing that i've seen someone the only other crime that someone's committed against me in the last like year uh it, it's more it's more blasphemous more sacrilege than this is when one snow bike mike was growing his hair out and he secretly committed to me that he was going to do a mullet he said he was going to go 1989 baseball player, and then he wussed out and decided to go with his normal fresh cut. I've never been more disappointed with someone, and I don't think I ever will be again. When the kids teased me and said that I looked like the ancient alien dude, that's when it broke me, Nick. So I was very close. <laughs> <laughs> what ancient alien, dude? The uh, you know, alien. You ever see me? Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Which what are we talking about? Which one the is this? Aliens meme um, guy. I got it, I got oh my it. god! Please pull this up. Please I was all up. in, Nick. Just so you know, like I was gonna, I was gonna kill it <laughs> with that Kentucky waterfall. Man, somebody posted that and it broke me. It was over. <laughs> It's you know, Mike. It's not far off though. <laughs> you know, oh Mike. You know, God. Mike. I, I hate to. I you know, I hate to agree with our audience. I hate to agree with people that watch our content, but they are right on this one. That was. <laughs> it's not like it wasn't. It's not. The, you don't look like this guy, but the vibe that this guy is putting out, you were starting to to radiate. You know what I mean? It's like when you get into someone's car, they haven't cleaned it in a while. It doesn't smell bad, but it's not a smell I want to be around mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what this kind of reminds me. That's of the vibe that Mike was putting out for a while. Yeah, there. that was that was broke me. God bless you, Mike. Uh, now, Andy, I want to I want to ask you a question yeah. before we get into some Patreon questions because okay. we got a couple humdingers here that I that I want to throw past you. I see it, take a swing at it, knock it out of the park, get a little grand slam, get the home run, win the game. Mm -hmm. You're not a fan of scary movies, no. but you are going to see a scary movie with us this week. Is that correct? Yes. You have heard that audience. Now, if Andy tries to back out of this, this is a verbal contract that he's seeing the new Edgar Wright movie with us at some point this week. It's an it's I'll, annoying, and I'm not you happy. You feel betrayed, don't you? I'm not happy with Sir Edgar Wright. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's, is he? I'm sorry. Was is he a knight? Has he been knighted? I believe so. I believe so. <laughs> okay. I'm not happy with the fact that this man has made a lot of movies that we have all enjoyed on the In Review series. Edgar I like Wright a lot In of Review. His had a mm -hmm. lot of fun with them. And then this motherfucker says, hey, next I'll do a scary movie. Mm -hmm. And why? Like, what's the point for what? You don't have to do that. Well, who are you trying to impress? You know, I'll enjoy whatever you're going to do next. And also just the idea of like Midnight at the Soho Express mm -hmm. sounds like such a cool like mystery kill. Like, you know, the, it's, a, it's a whodunit kind of like um the one y'all always talk about with Knives Out. Bradley Cooper. Yeah, Knives Out. Mm -hmm. um, Bradley Cooper. Yep. Bradley so Cooper. what's going on here? I love it. <laughs> Bradley Cooper uh, in Knives Out. When y'all talk Lining's about how that's Knives like this out. really cool whodunit, it, get, it got me really excited for Midnight in the Ho Ho Soho Express. And 
I don't like that it's a horror movie. I don't, I'm yep. not a fan of it. I I don't know. I'm just I'm not happy with it. I'm going to hope to, you know, drown my face in the popcorn. Maybe the scary mm-hmm. moment's going to happen. You know what all these scary movies do. They get it's it's, oh, it's high it's tension, quiet. high tension, oh, quiet. It's quiet and it's yep. quiet and you're like mm-hmm. here comes the fucking jump scare. What what it's just this is cheap. If See, you have to resort be- to this, this is a cheap trick. I'm going to dig my head in that big ass tub of popcorn, Nick. I'm excited to see this because the thing that you just said is absolutely correct. Like this is a psychological horror movie and horror movies, they always get you quiet, loud, boom, cheap scare, right? (laughs) This is Edgar Wright. We're talking about these transitions are going to fucking catch you off guard and you're going to get spooked. Andy Cortez, you're going to get popcorn all over the place and we are never, ever going to let you hear the end of it. (laughs) I'll tell you what, look, I've, I actually have a showing at another theater, so I won't be going to that one tonight. I have oh, one okay. at another theater that I'm really excited about, um, mm-hmm. but I'll be alone. Mm-hmm. I'll be just by myself. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, Andy, that this is actually a situation where we got early screener t- tickets to it, so you can't just go to another theater. Yeah, there are no other. It. Exactly. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, can I propose something to you, Nick? I would love that, Joey. Go ahead. So we're all going to see this movie at some point. Mm-hmm. Famously, Andy... Not great at handling the pop- popcorn. Midnight at the Soho not, Express. Not great. Not great at it. It's not that he's not great at it. It's just that, like, you know when you have that kicker for your football team, Mike, that just consistently misses the, the winning field goal, and you're like, God, we got to do better than this guy, but you're just too lazy to get a new kicker? That's kind of like what Andy's like when you let him carry the popcorn. That's Go not ahead, sure. It's not true. I would like to recommend for just some entertainment value on top of the movie, if we mm-hmm. all get large popcorn so that every time Andy inevitably throws the popcorn for a jump scare, right. we just rotate in a new one. I'm fine so with it's that. fresh, equal amounts of volume. See how many times. And then I Nick is going to eat all of it. Here's the thing, though. I don't know if we will ever. I don't know if I will experience a jump scare scarier than the one in Spider-Man 1. When. Oh, no, it's two. When um, Franco is looking out at the city and he's hearing noises, and then you see Doc Ock's claw just come out of nowhere. Just pump, that punch got me like that. You know, that got me. I was like, oh, my God, fucking Jesus Christ, Sam Raimi. That's a little too much right now. You are for sure going to get scared more than that tonight. <laughs> also, we're watching it in, in Atmos, which is like yeah, the loudest so theater loud. in the world. Dude, it was so loud when we saw that other. What, what did we uh, What did we see? Venom. Venom was so ridiculously loud, dude. Venom that was, was like an awful experience. It's like they were like, we know this movie is not good. How, what what actual what added value can we put on this? What if we played it five times louder than any human being can actually listen to something without fucking permanent hearing damage? Yeah, that's the ticket. That's what we need. Uh, Man, I've been chewing gum all fucking week, everybody. Like I'm gonna get locked jaw. I I bought one of those big ass boxes of bubble gum that you buy kind of in bulk uh, in in a sense and it's like you know little five packs of bubblicious mm-hmm. but it's about oh, so you started about bubble gum not like minty bubble gum joe bubble or, gum. or anything and it's strawberry le- watermelon strawberry watermelon something like that but it's like 30 packs of these five packs and i'm almost done with half the box because i i eat chew them flavor goes away I, I set them down and i might Put it back in my mouth if I want a little bit more of a taste, and I'll set it back down. I'm setting it back down on the wrapper again, but I've, I have a problem, and it's like it's yeah. ridiculous with all the bubble gum that's just sort of sitting around me right now. I think the problem is less that you're chewing bubble gum, or that you're putting it down and putting it back in your mouth. That's some psychopath shit. That's no, like I'm, the '80s when people used to put it underneath, like <laughs> they put it like on their cup or on their glasses, or whatever. Keep doing the thing and then take it out. Or no, so behind the ear. What movie was it where they put it behind the ear and then took it out and put it back? Oh in? yeah, was that Willy Wonka? No. I, yeah, I know yeah. exactly what you're talking. And that's so gross because like I'm always making sure I'm cleaning the back of my ears. Um, oh, yeah. and inside you don't of want my that ears. my back there. Yeah, yeah. Mm, no, there's always lint and there's always all sorts of things going on everywhere. Yeah, you don't want Gotta that extra like that build up. Gotta be you don't careful. want any build up anywhere on your body. Mm-hmm. Oh, my I want to talk about scary movies real quick. It's the week of Halloween. I know we got another podcast coming out there, but I, I, I've been very invested in watching scary movies uh, all month with with my wife. I've been like programming our TV every every Saturday and Sunday to watch some fun, scary movies. Uh, and I've also concurrently been watching the newest season of the movies that made us, which are actually very horror themed. They've got the Friday the 13th. They've got Halloween. They've got uh, Jesus Ooh. God, Andy. 
What is it? That's that's the gum on my desk right now. Do you want Andy! people to walk into your no, you room? You can't do that. You can't, you can't do that. that you Andy. can't do that. That is not okay. What I do is I reach for the closest one because I know that's the one that's probably got the most flavor in it. Mike. Well, oh, no. God. I you throw know what? Up. In the vending machine, Nick, put gum in there. I'll make a no. bunch of money off Andy. Put gum in there. Oh, my God. <laughs> Absolutely not. I'm not. Dude, that's if if I see that in the new office, I'm just going to I'm just going to leave. I'm just going <laughs> to. It's over. I'm done. <laughs> Uh, watching a lot of horror movies. We had a fun question come through over on Patreon uh, from Legend of Zelda and said, what was the horror movie or show that effed you up the most? That can uh, it could be because it was so scary or maybe it had some other effect on you. Happy Spooky Month. Love you all. Uh, of course, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to ask us questions, you go over to patreon.com slash kind of funny where you can write in <clears> just <throat> like Legend of Zelda did. I'm going to kick this off real quick because – there aren't a lot of movies that messed me up that I have watched lately. But last night, for some reason, and so because it's on Amazon Express. Prime. No, Andy, no, worse. I watched with D, Arachnophobia. <laughs> thinking, Tim, there's no way I remember this movie correctly, right? There's no way this movie is as unbelievably unnerving as it was when I watched it in the, for the first time back in the Canyon Crest Cinemas back in 1990 in Riverside, California. Fuck, it holds up. Do not watch this movie if you have any <laughs> <of> spiders. <laughs> it is... It, there's a moment where Jeff Daniels, they just walk into the house. Have you ever seen this movie, Tim? I, oh, yeah. Yeah. Mike, have you ever seen Arachnophobia? I have seen this movie. Okay. <laughs> there's a moment where they walk in at the very, very end. And and Jeff Daniels is looking around, and he's there with like the two other guys. He's got John Goodman with him. I think he's got this the, one or, in the barn. No, no, no. They've already the guys already died. The English dude from Warlock has already died in the barn, and they're going into the house to get um uh his wife and the kid or the two mm. kids, mm-hmm. and they walk in all silently, and he's just like, and his wife like looks over and catches on like something's going on, right? And then the kid screams, and on the TV they're watching Family Ties. And this almost ruined family ties for me. This is how scary this was. Looks over. One of the spiders is crawling down the front of the TV. And then, like fucking clockwork, another screen, they look over, and spiders just start pouring out from behind the drapes. And it cuts, and it goes from no spiders on the walls to every wall has a live spider on it. And this was the part that I distinctly remember when I was a kid going, I would like to get the fuck out of this theater. I would like to get up and just leave this theater right now. And if it wasn't for John Goodman's character, who was like the comic relief, I think I would have freaked out and left that theater back in the day. (laughs) But I'm thinking to myself, like, there's no way I'm going to be as unnerved with this. Me and Dee are hiding our eyes as we're watching this last night because this movie was still so well done with all of the live spider act. They call them actors, but I call them spiders. Um, all the live right. act, spiders that they used. Yeah. They did an IMDb trivia. They were like, all the spider actors are like, they, 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 they don't care. A, the spiders don't care how you refer to Yeah, they have a union. Yeah. So I want to know, is there any movies like that from y'all's past that you think of that if you watch still to this day or any franchises to this day that still makes you just feel like you're a 10-year-old kid inside? So I have an answer that, that is kind of related. I feel like if I were to watch it today, it wouldn't get me as bad, but it would bring me back to the moments. And that is Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds. Oh, oh man, which I know that's a good one. Can't that's, be that's the kinda, arachnophobia of the skies. And, but that's the thing, though. It's like <laughs> you're scared of spiders. You're not scared of birds, birds. right? I grew up in yeah. San Francisco. There's fucking pigeons and shit everywhere. It's like seagulls and all that. It's like I'm used to birds. But let me tell you guys the story of the birds now uh my mom and dad born and raised san francisco so they're very proud just like i am it's a whole it runs in the family type situation um because of that there's been a lot of movies that were shot around the bay area and of course there any chance they get like did you know that in return of the jedi the speeder bikes were in this forest and blah blah blah, like all that type of stuff right and me being a little kid so into it like this is the coolest thing ever so dope but i didn't need to know that the birds were shot just right Living across bag. the bridge, right oh, up yeah. there, right? So oh, close. Yeah. So we With were live there. bird actors. And we were there. Exactly. <laughs> they did we actually. went. I must have been like five or six. And that meant Cool Greg was like four. And we're hanging out. We're having lunch. And my mom's telling me like, this is where they shot the birds. And I'm like, oh, my God. That's so cool. But that's scary. Whatever. And I fucking kid you not. About 30 minutes into this lunch, a bird comes out of the sky. My brother's hair 
Like he normally shaves it now, but you guys see it when it's it grows beautiful. out, uh, and it's yeah. this fucking beautiful, it's gorgeous. like rat blonde, nest, curls, blonde yes. just like insanity, right? So this bird must have thought it was a nest. Comes <laughs> diving out of the sky and just like starts fucking attacking my four year old brother. My dad gets in, involved, starts fucking swinging around and shit. The bird eventually just flies off. My brother, totally fine. It just kind of dived on him. It was just a scary moment. <laughs> Camera pans over to Tim. <laughs> I didn't stop crying for fucking hours. Like, it was the scariest thing humanly possible. Yeah. A six-year-old yeah. little Timmy, yeah. all right? I'm standing there with my fucking Optimus Prime rolling it along like the, the, the side <laughs> things, and all of a sudden, the fucking birds happens where they shot the birds. I didn't trust my mom. I, I was so mad. I like I, I was convinced that she knew what she was doing, and she was tempted fate. And like, I was, I think it was the first time I was legitimately upset with my parents. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. It's, I love it because there's nothing more terrifying than like death from above especially no. in san francisco where everything is just so vertical uh on this planet uh joey yeah let's say you actually before we ask joey about her uh her favorite or least favorite horror movie we're gonna take a second to tell you about our sponsors wow the ads are at 41 minutes and six seconds you could, we could have probably put them a little earlier actually right before this topic but it's I fine. forgot. I'm a bad host. <clears throat> this episode is brought to you by Me Undies. Are you ready for mashed potato season, aka turkey with gravy and cranberry sauce season, aka every kind of pie and more season? Well, Me Undies is here with the softest and stretchiest undies in the game, so you can be ready for seconds and thirds, baby. I love Me Undies. I have for a very long time, even right now. Of course, I'm wearing my lounge pants, the undies themselves, and the socks. I love having that soft micromodal fabric all over my body. They have undies and loungewear made out of soft, breathable, stretchy fabrics that are perfect for everything from pre-dinner activities to post-dinner naps. Uh, Me Undies also has a great deal for you guys. Uh, for any first-time purchasers, you can get 15% off and free shipping. Me Undies also has a promise. If you're not satisfied with any product for any reason, you can return your order for a full refund within 45 days. To get 15% off your first order, free shipping, and 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash morning. That's MeUndies.com slash morning. And next up, shout out to Trade. Are you the kind of person who falls asleep already thinking about the next morning's coffee? Well, Trade's goal is to make every cup of coffee your best ever. The journey to your perfect cup starts with taking their coffee quiz. You use a French press, automatic drip, you're a cold brew person? No problem. Trade will match you to coffees you'll love from 400 plus craft coffees and will send you a freshly roasted bag as often as you'd like. Trade guarantees you'll love your first match. On the off chance that you don't though, they'll replace it with a different bag for free. Me and Cool Gray had a lot of fun going through the quiz, trying to find him his perfect coffee, and he has been having a great time with Trade. Uh, for you guys out there right now, Trade is offering your first bag free and $5 off your bundle at checkout. To get yours, just go to drinktrade.com slash kind of funny and use promo code kind of funny. Take the quiz to start your journey to the perfect cup. That's drinktrade.com slash kind of funny promo code kind of funny for your first bag free and $5 off of your bundle. That's D-R-I-N-K-T-R-A-D-E dot com slash kind of funny. And next up, shout out to Uncommon Goods. If you're on a mission to be the best gift giver ever this season, it's never too early to start looking, no matter who you're shopping for. Uncommon Goods is the place to find remarkable and truly original gifts for anyone. Me and Gia actually recently just did a puzzle that we got from them. That was a lot of fun just for some like bonding date night time. And there's actually a bunch of really cool date night options there. Uh, there was one thing that I was looking at that is a date night painting where you get this, uh, you get the package and you actually get a 90 minute a uh, session with an instructor you guys get to paint together it's a whole thing it sounds like a blast uncommon goods looks for products that are high quality unique and often handmade they have the most meaningful out of the ordinary gifts anywhere and with every purchase you make uncommon goods gives one dollar back to a non-profit partner of your choice that's awesome to get 15 percent off your next gift go to uncommongoods.com slash kind of funny that's uncommongoods.com slash kind of funny for 15 percent off don't miss out on this limited time offer uncommongoods.com slash kind of funny. Joey, what is a horror franchise that messed you up as a kid? Okay. I have some comments before I get to that point. One, Nick nailed it with arachnophobia. The scene of the spider crawling into the slipper oh has my stayed God. with me for my entire life. 
anytime I put on a slipper, which is like uh, multiple times a day. It. Yep. Like I like my slippers. I always have to like check. You gotta check to make sure that anything's the clap. in there. You gotta do the clap. Yeah. I do the clap Shake it every out. single time I put shoes on. I hate on. it. I hate it. Um kind of piggybacking off of that. Another horror move moment that has stuck oh, wait, with wait. me my entire wait, life. Wait, wait, Bef- before though, okay. you just reminded me of the one that got D last night. The one where she literally had to hide. She, I've never heard my wife, you know, the, my wife, very even keel person. Mm-hmm. Nothing really affects her, right? She's married to me for Christ's sake at this point. She's like mm-hmm. stone cold killer. Hides her eyes and balls up into a ball on the couch during the shower sequence in her Oh, Arachnophobia. that's another. Ooh. When the fucking ooh, spider ooh. comes down and this poor actress had to deal with a live spider coming down and crawling on Fuck her no. face as she, and she Absolutely thinks Andy, no. she thinks it's water at first and then realize it's a spider and then bats it away and it climbs down her nude body and then goes into the drain. And it's like, talk about the most vulnerable sequence ever. Horrifying. Spiders, kill them all. Why do they exist? Why do we still have them? Joey, I apologize for interrupting. Absolutely not. You're totally fine. A few weeks ago, I get a late night phone call from one Greg Miller. I answer it. And he was like, no, it was a good one. It was a Joey, it's time. I need you to come take care of Portillo. Right. Perfect. I've been on deck. I've been waiting for living for this moment, you know. Get in my car, start driving over to Greg's. I am on 19th and behind or in front of me is a logging truck <laughs> oh no <laughs> dog you nailed it with this joe <laughs> yeah Scary. logging truck i see it in front of me immediately get over as far as humanly possible final destination has fucked up so many things where it's like i could not even tell you the like plot the characters who else is in it besides devon sala but there <laughs> that logging truck scene mm-hmm. has never once left my brain for my entire 32 years of life or however how, since i've seen this movie Best terrifying answer. final destination terrifying. 2's opening scene it is it is just well awful. i don't remember that is the, does the log go through someone's face like the lethal weapon 2 or what happens in that? Dude, the highway yeah. to yeah. hell starts yeah. playing as they're driving on a highway yeah. and then it's just a c- fucking comedy of errors of all this shit. But yeah, the logs all fucking fall off and it just turns into insanity. One day they'll make another final destination. And on that day we will do final destination in review. Interview. And I can't, we got to try to get Devin to at least oh, be on one of those. That would be, I bet, I bet he'd do at least one. I don't think we can get him the commit for all of it. He's a busy guy, but if we can get it for the first one, that'd be amazing. And I'll just refer to him as his character in that. Um, I do have another one though, which I must have told on some show. Maybe We've not talked about this people. before, but I love going over them every Halloween. This is my favorite topic. The Blair Witch Project scared the oh shit of me, shit out of me as a kid because so I grew up like movies is like my family's thing, which sounds is like a weird thing to say, but like my mom is a big movie buff, always wanted me to watch a ton of movies, all that sorts of stuff, and horror specifically is like something my mom's really into. So we decide, <laughs> my mom decides. I'm going to take baby childhood Joey to go see Why? Blair Witch Project Mrs. in theaters. Mrs. Takagami, what are you doing? Mrs. This T. is how – this is totally just like a glimpse into my family. My grandma, when my mom was little, like my grandpa owned a bar in the city. So like he was gone at nights and stuff like that. So my mom would be like in my grandma's room with her and stuff like that. And my grandma would be like, I feel the urge. And my mom would be like so scared. And like my – Grandma had convinced my mom that she was like a vampire for a period oh of time just to like grandma, fuck with my mom. That is the best. That is <laughs> and the my mom best. would be like, no, you don't. And my <laughs> grandma would be like, I need blood. And my mom would be like, wait till dad gets home. And she'd be like, my grandpa, she's like, no, his neck is old and like wrinkly. I want like fresh blood. And it would just like freak my mom out. And that's just like the weird humor in my family. God bless. I so, love like, that. So, like, essentially that boils down to, like, torturing children is, like, a normal thing that we do. Yeah, of course. So, Blair Witch Project, we go. My dad's out of town on a business trip. We go. I'm scared. This is also – I feel like it's so hard to tell this story because found footage was, like, not a genre of horror at that time. And, like, nobody knew if it was real or fake. There was that whole, like, marketing campaign of, like – it was unknown actors, so nobody knew who they right. were. It wasn't and like, like Steve Buscemi was like, hi, I'm here. I'm the Blair Witch. <laughs> no, it was yeah, like a bunch ex- of Tony. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. How was that? Was that a good- Andy, you're the master of impressions. How was my Steve Buscemi there? 
Uh, it's honestly not bad for a first try. Andy, can you give me the Steve Buscemi as Andy? Can you give me the Steve Buscemi as as Blair Witch, please? I don't know. I think like a little bit more nasally. Like I don't know. I'm I'm Steve Buscemi. I don't know what what do you want from me? You know, like just something like that. Like you know, I'll I'll workshop it. Uh, Now back to Joey. I've also never tried that ever, and that was like easily like a three out of (laughs) ten. Yeah, we're both we're both sub five out of ten for sure on those. Um. So we go. I'm terrified. I have no idea if this is real. Like nobody knows. Like there was like the some sort of like ARG before it came out. I don't remember. So we go home. My dad's out of town. One of the exciting things when my dad's out of town is I get to sleep in my mom's room. And I, that means all the dogs are there. And this is an exciting, fun thing. So we go. We go to bed. Da, 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 da. <clears throat> in the middle of the night, somebody's car alarm starts going off. Stressful annoying whatever my mom is like who the fuck's car alarm is still going off like it's been going off for like 10 minutes she goes to the front of the house and looks out the window and realizes it's coming from our car which like we don't have a car alarm on our car so she's like what i don't understand what's happening she goes downstairs i (laughs) said i have seen all the movies i'm not going i'm I'm staying upstairs with the dogs yeah my mom goes she opens the car door it's not a car alarm it's the car horn is like stuck and just blaring oh no so i'm like is it blair witching blair witching oh oh blaring witch so she just starts like hitting it because she doesn't know what else to do and just like out of the corner of her eye, she can see one of our neighbors used to rent out a bunch of rooms, just a dark figure with the lit end of a cigarette, <laughs> just watching, not saying anything, just watching. So my mom's like hitting this car horn, trying to figure out what the fuck is happening, eventually gets it to stop honking and then like runs inside away from this man who's literally never said anything, but it's probably like 20 feet from my mom, just smoking mm-hmm. a cigarette and watching. He just keeps Every time she looks back, he's just a little closer. You're like, All right. <laughs> like, oh, gosh, I could not oh, handle that. Right. Uh, comes back upstairs, literally has never happened ever again in the lifetime of owning that car, but oh, happens God. to be the one time we see Blair Witch and my dad's out of town. I love it. I've never once recovered from that story. And that's why I think that there's something, something out there. I don't know what it is. Sometimes I don't want to ask too many questions. It's oh, the so devil's questions. real. The devil's real. Demons are real. <laughs> the devil's for sure. real. <laughs> The devil's real. Blair Witch very much messed me up too, for sure. I would like to, I and I, I don't want to put this person on the spot, but I would like to ask Mike if he could, re, if he, if he's comfortable telling the us why he doesn't like horror movies. Yes, Nick, I would love to tell you the story. Oh, here we go. I, I don't like time. horror movies. <laughs> this is the funniest fucking thing I've ever heard. So back in 2006, a movie called Texas Chainsaw Massacre hit the scene. And everybody was very excited. And there's one thing that I love about my mom is she is a huge horror buff. She loves all of the spooky, scary things around Halloween. And she loves to get a little fright to her system. So one day, it was a nice Saturday afternoon. It was me, my mom, and my best friend, Cole Caps Alice at the time. And we went to the movie theater. And I thought we might go see Spider-Man. We might go see something nice, uplifting, positive, as I like to keep it. And mom and Cole said, you know what would be cool? If we saw a Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you're 16. You're thinking, man, mom's going to take us into a rated R movie. That sounds kind of dope. Right. And I looked at mom and Cole and I I was a little apprehensive. I was like, I don't know, maybe. And they're like, no, don't worry about it. We're going to do it. Right. And so we go into Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's us and one dude sitting by himself. And I'll tell you what, if you ever go to a horror movie and there's just one jabroni sitting by himself, you probably shouldn't be in that movie theater because that guy, he's got a screw loose. Okay. I'm going to be honest with y'all. So we sit down. Tim, Joey, I promise you not. It's 10 minutes into the film. We've had the lead up. It's a bunch of hot college bodies in a minivan (laughs) driving through the state of Texas. They stop at a scary gas station. Scary people are there saying, oh, don't come to this town. You don't want to be here. And they're like, oh, don't worry. We're going to party, right? Then all of a sudden, two seconds later, they drive down the highway. And this girl runs out of the bushes. Penny. Penny doesn't look good. She's got dirt. She's got mud. She's got blood on her. And she's screaming about something bad. And I remember gripping the chair real tight going, oh, I don't like this setting. And all of a sudden, Penny reaches up into her hoo-ha and pulls out a revolver and shoots her brains out five minutes into the film. I immediately stood up, looked at Mama Cole, and I said, we're leaving right now. (laughs) Face full of tears, crying in front of them. I said, we're leaving. And they said, Mike, the movie hasn't started yet. I said, no, we're leaving right now. There's no questions. And they both stood up, giggled, and we walked out of the movie theater. The guy looked at us. The one loner dude looked at us as we left. And at that point, I had never watched a horror movie again since then. And I'm still scarred to this day. I I watch 
I have a TV running all night long because I'm afraid that Texas Chainsaw Massacre Man might come and murder me in my sleep. So my thought process is he'll see ESPN on, think that I'm awake, can't murder me yeah, if I'm awake. You gotta be sleeping. Yeah. 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 Oh, those no. are the rules of Leatherface. Yeah. <laughs> now I just I just want to point out that Mike at no point has seen Leatherface. He does not know, he know what he looks the like. context yeah. of what this this person is. He just know he calls him the Texas Chainsaw Massacre guy. <laughs> Oh my god, oh my I love gosh. this. Uh, that is so fucking funny. Uh, Mike said Bless that Mike you. told me that story the other day. I was just like, you that is such a that, that is so us. Yeah. I don't know what it is about this island of misfits toys we've put together to yeah. him. But God, I, I we're so blessed to have everyone here. <laughs> we really are. I, I, another one I want to give a shout out to, and, and this is weird. I need to rewatch this as an adult because I don't know if this was a good movie or not. But it was the the first time I can explicitly remember that Kevin and I watched what we would consider an adult movie uh, where Kevin's mom was watching uh, a movie called what lies beneath. Oh, oh yeah. I fucking love this Ford movie. And Michelle that, was good, that was a good movie. And I remember being enthralled by that it. The one and I was she like, cheated? yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 And they're like, yeah. there's a lot of like, like twists and stuff. But what was in this movie was a, the first time I had ever seen what I now know is a trope that's overdone to hell. But the first time I ever saw a character look in a mirror and then, turn around and like look back and there's something behind her yeah and it scarred me like that changed everything where i was like oh shit there are no rules like there this is the most terrifying thing i have ever seen and i'm looking up this movie right now and let me blow y'all simple little minds blow with a fucking have. fact I need it guess who wrote that movie kevin williamson the answer is clark greg aka no. shit. agent colson really, <laughs> really? yeah what the fuck <laughs> Mm. That's, that's, so random. that's one of those want, like uh david hater road x-men like that's one of those totally facts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's weird i i dude i remember watching that movie and i think i mean I, should we spoil this for people it's an old movie where we can kind of spoil oh, it i would movie. say like, no, no i'm not gonna spoil this yeah it's actually it, I, again, I think it holds up i haven't i haven't seen this movie since pro in probably 15 20 years but i remember being like this is actually a really good like thriller horror movie because of a, a number of different things. Go watch that. I'm not going to spoil it for people. I like that a lot. Um, I will go with... Um, it's, it's Yeah, weird. where's the origin of Andy yeah, not liking Andy horror movies coming like It's, it's yeah, weird, Joe, because you mentioned Blair Witch, and I grew up with an older brother who was five years older than me, and uh, we had some cousins that were closer to my brother's age, like it, that were a year or two younger than my brother. Um, so I was always like the young kid around, like the cool older cousins and the cool brother. And like, I remember watching Blair Witch and I remember watching all the Scream movies as a kid. And and they didn't really overly fuck with me. But I really think that it was. Um, I really want to say that it was probably. Uh, the Sixth Sense. And, I, and I've told that oh. before we went as a school field trip and yeah. just the idea of like things being there that you can't see and it was it was also just like the the very non-threatening nature of the dead people as they're walking around looking horrifying and just kind of like sitting there and there's that one kid with his like head blown off and like Ugh. but they're not doing anything like scared like the, the i don't yeah. know that fucked with me so hard and i remember the in one of the scenes the girl's like under the bed misha barton was no way yeah. Oh, Maybe yeah. Burn. What the that's fuck? right. So, like, I that that sequence plays out really like again. We saw that on a school field trip, and it just it really fucked me up. What and kind of field trip did you? See Joe, this, this is like on? fifth grade or sixth grade or something. <laughs> it was wild. And then that same summer, I went to Arkansas, and I uh, with you know hung out with family for about a month, and I would sleep on my cousin's floor, and I would immediately think of the girl under the bed. And that just that fucked with me on like a psychological level for a long time. And I think it was really that movie that kind of just gets. I'll be I'll be totally fine sleeping at night, Joe. And then like an image will just pop up in my head and I go, oh, fuck. Now I'm just thinking of this thing now and I'm freaking <laughs> out about it. Or um, uh, I, also fire in the sky really fucked me up. We've talked oh, about that dude. a million times. But that yeah. that alien sort of abduction sequence is horrifying one of the scariest things ever and that's on amazon prime just, right now andy if you want to watch it with me i've never seen it watch party no no i'm good i'm good <laughs> um 
horrifying and it's also just really gross and like just everything about it was just really fucked up um yes. and i don't really know what else honestly i remember uh, when me and my ex-girlfriend went to go watch it the 2017 one or whatever that was yeah the newest one yeah well the, the one before the, the newest one it, um, chapter one yeah part one yeah, mm. chapter one. And this the sequence of the girl who plays the violin at, from the painting. And she was well, it a violin or a horn or like a, a clarinet or something? I don't remember any. I don't, I don't remember, remember this. Part. Part. Are you talking about there, the part where the kid goes to like the to the He goes to like church? a church. He goes to like a the church. Or whatever. Yeah. 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 And he sees the painting and it's like that weird ass painting. Yeah, it's like the girl I don't she's, she's, she's painting, painted though. all fucked up in the drawing, and then she comes to life out of that painting. Yeah. And it's just imagery like that that really fucks me up. Whenever we talk about the way um, the way Japanese filmmakers and developers do horror with, like, the twitching of the bodies and stuff. Like, when we did PT recently, Mike, and Lisa, her body's, like, twitching all fucked up. Like, it's that stuff that really is so unsettling yeah. to me. I hate that shit, dude. Hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it. I, I will say one of, my, um, one of the things I've enjoyed probably most in the last, like, two years is watching, yesterday watching Mike play uh, Visage. That was <laughs> that was an experience because I'm also watching him play it. He wasn't streaming to me, so I was just watching the stream. But I'm talking to Mike in real time, which is always awkward because he screams, and then I see what he was screaming at 20 seconds later. <laughs> so my laugh is delayed by 20 seconds, but still really good. Uh, one of the other series that screwed me up before I go—I think I've talked about this before—but man, Nightmare on Elm Street, go fuck yourself. I've never Go seen that. Fuck one. yourself. That fucked me up when I was a kid. And the, to Joey, you want to talk about shit that you're not supposed to watch when you're when you're a kid. Well, the other day we were watching uh me and D were watching Predator, as we do. It's one of those <laughs> movies, Tim, it comes on TV, you catch it in the wild, you're like, we gotta watch Predator, right? Uh God bless my wife. She's like, Predator's on. I was like, fucking marry me again. <laughs> so we get to this part uh in Predator. It's it was like there's like multiple parts in that movie that are just, they're scary. It was legitimately kind of like a horror sci-fi movie, right? Uh, which a lot of people don't realize because it's turned into just sort of some, it, it's ridiculous now. But back in the day, it was scary. And I was like, oh man, this part always scared me. And she goes, huh. And then we got to another part where he's doing the thing with like the razor blade. I was like, oh man, that part always freaked me out when I was a kid, when I watched this. And she goes, wait, when did this movie come out? And I was like, uh, I don't know. And I looked it up and it was like, oh, it came out in 1987. And she was like, wait. She's like, when did you see it? I was like, well, I saw it in theaters. She goes, wait, you saw this movie? When She's like, wait, how, when were you born? I was like, 1980. And she's like, do the math. And I was like, yeah, I was seven when I saw this film. <laughs> and she goes, you saw Predator in the movie theater when you were seven. And you think that maybe that might be a little bit of a reason why you're kind of fucked up? And I'm like, nah, come on. I just made this tougher. I just made this tougher. You're fucked up for right a lot there. of other reasons. Yeah, that's not. That's the least of my problems here, Andy. The, the caffeine addiction at a very young age probably had more to do with where we're at right now. I have one more. Age. Go well, ahead, Tim. Tim Tim's having an muted. issue. Uh, Tim, you might want to unplug your mic, your mic and plug it back in. Is it lit? <laughs> plug and unplug. What's happening? Well, Tim does that. I can about. tell my last one. Um, and this is not a good movie, but it's always stuck with me. The we still can't hear you if you're doing anything. Uh, the House of Wax remix that mm. came out in like the mid 2000s. No, Joey, the original House of Wax was fucking. I love the original House of me. with Vincent Price. It's so good. And the kid, and the kid from uh, the guy from Gremlins, right? The kid that was the lead in Gremlins, I think, is in House of Wax. Like the no, we're talking about House of Wax. Wait, wait, what did you say? I said House of so ha like the House old Wax, Vincent yeah. Price one. Yes. Yeah, well, yeah. he plays the he plays the the museum curator, key, curator yeah. or whatever. I think the kid in that is the same is the lead from Gremlins. If I'm not mistaken, I'll look that up right oh, now really? while you talk. Sorry, oh, yeah, so go ahead. So I grew up really loving the old one. <clears throat> I uh, so when the new one came out, I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna see it. Plus, it has Jared Padalecki in it. It has Chad Michael Murray. It has like all of my wait, people. like the 1953 House of Wax is the original. Oh, you know, I'm talking about the one. There's that came another out in the 80s. one. Yeah, oh, okay. it's like a a Star Is Born where there's just been like 17. Yeah, oh, they made got it. The Vincent Price one, I think he was in the original one, and then I think they got him back for back. the back. Oh, interesting. Uh, Tim said his computer pooped the bed, so unfortunately, I guess we'll work on that. Yeah, he'll be fine. Um, but and then the big like marketing one for the 2000s one was that like Paris Hilton was in it, so you see her dying or whatever. Um. But there's one scene where like Jared Padalecki you, is Mike. trying to get away from uh get away from the killer or whatever. Mm -hmm. And 
from the floorboards, somebody, the killer's hand comes up and snips his Achilles tendon oh, from the back yeah. so oh. he can't run away. Oh. And that has stayed. That's Fuck another that. like final destination thing that has stayed with me for my entire life. So like anytime I like turn off the light before I run into my bed and voice like dee -dee -dee -dee, to tiptoe, even though like under my bed are like drawers built into the bed frame. Like there is no under my bed for someone mm. to hide, oh. but I still can't get over it. And I'm like, that is such a fucked Achilles, up thing to that, do. Uh, so they can't happened. run. He was like dragging himself along the floor in it. That, that happened in, um, if you remember, that's what the kid does to uh, the older guy in Pet Cemetery. He takes a little scalpel. <laughs> And then the old guy like has to crawl out and the kid stabs him. Joey, we were wrong. I'm sorry. I believe the remake was called Wax Work. That oh, was I don't the think one I've that, ever seen it. That's the one I'm talking about that has um, Zach. What is this guy? Zach Galligan, who was the, uh, the lead in uh, Gremlins movie. This was the movie that was like very similar where like people started turning into wax figures. And he's like, what's going on? And it was like this movie kind of screwed me up when I was a kid. A lot of films <laughs> screwed me up when I was a kid. I know. <sighs> you, know yeah. you know one that you'll never forget, though, on the horror side? saw and the ending to saw man. you know what i mean you have that tension build up there you are watching the man chop off bum, his bum, own bum, foot bum, 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 and then here bum, comes bum, the music bum, it's building bum, 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 it's like oh bum, motherfucker bum, i was here the whole time and then the dead body gets up and you're like no it's insane nothing cooler. <laughs> he the door. holy dude never forget dude, that bro i walked out of saw i couldn't do it being in theaters for like saw one through four Oh, those goddamn plot twists were some of the coolest shit as like to experience as a kid and being like, wow, this is like the pinnacle of creativity right here. Like <laughs> it doesn't get any better than this, man, because like straight up, like I, I remember the, the plot twist I saw too blew my fucking mind. What was with, the plot twist for that? I, I only watched the first saw and then I was like, I think I'm done with the saw series. I don't think I need to see these anymore. S saw two is the uh, um, spoilers for saw two. We're spoiling things. Get put ready. Put it away. Yeah, yeah. Put it yeah. away. But put the phone down, everybody. Put the phone down if you don't want spoilers for Saw 2. It's the one uh, where the kid was kidnapped, right? And they're it's Marky Mark's brother. Um, Donnie Wahlberg. John, Donnie Wahlberg. And the kid, they kept showing them footage, but the footage was like from earlier, but they thought it was in real time. And the kid was really in the safe in the room with them all along. They just didn't oh. know. And it was like one of the coolest things of all fucking time. Like they kind of they thought they were watching a live feed of shit happening. But really, all this stuff had happened a while already, like maybe a day prior. And so you kind of start figuring that because I, I think they go into these scenes and the bodies that really don't feel they don't seem fresh. Maybe maybe I'm making this up. I don't know. But I feel like there's a couple of sequences where you're like, wow, the bodies look like they didn't just die. It looks like they've been dead for a long time. And then it turns out that the kid that they're trying to save was in the room with them the whole time in a safe, like locked in a safe. It's really fucking cool. It's awful. Man, I'm looking I, at photos right now. It's that was a bad one. That was a I just one. you guys probably don't have any context for this movies that screwed me up because you were it was like two decades later you're born. But I was looking at this wax work and there was another movie that was like, oh, if you like this, you know, on IMDb, it's like you like this movie that yeah. fucked you up as a kid. How about this other movie that fucked you up when you were a kid? <laughs> and this what one is, is Night of the Creeps. And you guys have probably never seen this movie, but it is like the spiritual successor to um, Slither. Did you ever watch Slither, which was the the James Gunn, James right? Gunn, uh, Nathan Fillion, Elizabeth Banks, I think was in it as well. With those little things like slither at you and they go into your like face and they take over your body. Night of the Creeps was like the original version of that. And it was, it screwed me up. There were like these little things that crawled at you really fast and like sucked into your body and like fucked you up and made you like a zombie thing. I never could look at bathroom stalls the same way ever again. <laughs> whoa. Did you ever whoa, see whoa. a fat, um, f f um, Best oh, Times at Ridgemont High. Love that movie. No, it's 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 one of those that. So, every, the girl goes into the TV. No, it's a horror movie that sort of everybody regards as Poltergeist. One of those like underground horror movies, and if you know about it, you're cool. Um, oh, it's like from the seventies. It's got a weird name to it. I wanted to say Phantasmagoria, but that's the terrible oh, yeah. FMV was, game video game. No, that's Phantasmagoria was a was a movie as well. A fanta yeah, Phantasmagoria, I think, was a movie about the uh, balls. No, the but it, ball it's, it's a word that kind of reminds me of that because it's a Oh, very, you're talking about Hellraiser? No, no, no. It's, no, no, no. it's a word that is very unique and weird, and 
is not something that you is it hear. Suspiria? Suspiria, there it is. The thank original you, Madeline, Sus- in the chat there. The original Suspiria. <clears throat> thank you so much, Madeline. The original Suspiria, I saw that at my friend's house in back in Austin. And that shit was a like an attack on the senses. I didn't know what was happening. I probably shouldn't have been high as well. <laughs> But it was like, fucked never gonna up, man. man. It was so weird, flash. and the sound design was so unsettling. Fuck that shit. And then they remade it, and I think everybody hated it. Recently, yeah. Um, I couldn't uh, remember what it was called either, so I just had to do dance or remake movie. And then they, yeah, they did it with Dakota. They remade it with Dakota Johnson, right? Right. Um, yeah. I think people like. I think the criticism of that people were like, "This is a totally different movie." Um, I was thinking Phantasm, by the way, which is the, which is an old movie that I never saw because the um, poster. Chloe was Grace Moretz. Me. Was it Not Chloe Grace Moretz? Yeah. For the new Suspiria? Oh, and Dakota Johnson. Yeah, yeah I was going to say. Dario I thought, I thought Argento. I remember just hearing that and being like, wow, this is like, this is some total film house bullshit, like total Austin <laughs> hipster thing that you go to. <laughs> Oh, uh, did, oh y'all ever, God, yeah. did y'all ever? Did y'all ever hear about It's a draft house movie for sure. No, not even draft house. It's the it's the uh, old it's like rental a, place in Austin that. Yeah, dude. It was like it's one like, of the last uh, VHS kind of rental places that we was, went there, Andy. I think we went there with you one time. Remember, it was like that cool. It's like it was like the place to go to. It was open late. You go and rent like VHS or DVDs or whatever it was. Right? Yeah, I forget what the yeah. freak it was called, but God it was like it. It, it definitely closed down. But it was one of those like last staples of kind of Austin keep Austin weird culture. You know that sort of shit. Um, yeah, they would have like, there was always like a classic, like the classic posters that they would have like stapled around, like the ones for scanners or video drone or all those movies that people like it's, you see t-shirts like, that's cool. I bet that's a cool movie. And you watch it like, wow, that's fucked up shit. They did back in the (laughs) eighties. Scanners is one of those movies that I didn't watch until way later. And I'm like, oh man, I wish I had seen this because it's actually a really cool concept, but, um, video drone, I can't get through. I don't think I ever started watching that actually tell you the truth. I love, I think it was called I Love Video. Yeah, that's it. I Love Video. And it was uh, gigantic, dude. Check this shit out. Um, Ooh. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait. This isn't the place I'm thinking. Oh, maybe it is the place. That's cool. Man, see, I wish stores like that. Like, I wish they, those guys could apply for, like, uh, historical status with cities. So that the, the city would just kind of help subsidize that. Because this <clears> is really <throat> just a lost a moment lost in time these, yeah. these video stores like this yeah you know i mean thankfully the alamo draft house has like figured out how to sort of like uh they have that front you, section yeah they got the front section they've got that and they've kind of figured out how to how to meld movies movie rentals and like and bar and stuff like that so hopefully they'll hold on for a long time but it's a shame that nobody figured out how to like make the physical movie like uh, movie rental store something cool that could just hang out for a long time because Man, those are that was always fun. Mike probably barely remembers that. Although Mike lives in Tahoe, so it's possible that he still rents all of his stuff from like the last. <laughs> there the is last, one two blocks away from my house. house. Yeah, I, I was bet. just gonna say I would pay good money to go to one of those shops, like nice looking like that, with you, Nick, and have you walk us all around, and you know we all share stories about different movies oh, and DVDs. Would be really cool. That I would, would make love a great that. experience. Be There's fun. nothing but like the, the closest thing we can get to doing that, Mike, is when you move down here, we're going to take you to this place that we all love to go to. It's near and dear to our heart. A little place called Best Buy. Have you heard of this place? <laughs> Best Buy? No, I don't have one of you. I don't have okay. one. You know the one by Tanfran is closed? Oh, no, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it. we, oh, we, were we found out when we were there eating, yeah, with <laughs> Lisa and James. Oh, no way. We have to go that to the sucks. Colma one now. Uh, the Colma one's closer to the office anyway. That's the one I was thinking of. That's the one where we went through and we literally just went through all the Blu-rays and just <laughs> walked from A to Z. The and Tim like, and Kevin special. Oh, uh, that was so – I love doing that. There's nothing more nostalgic than walking through and just like pull, you pull one up like, oh, remember this movie? And everyone's like, yeah, Nick, it's – Fucking Casino Royale. We've seen it about a thousand times. Like, oh, it's so good, though, guys. Remember that part where he runs to the wall? So freaking Casino fun. Royale is okay. We could be on the precipice of something with this, Nick. You know how record stores have like now come back into Ooh. pop culture? Sure. We could be on the forefront of bringing back some sort of movie. Maybe not a rental yeah. thing, no, but, but mm-hmm. like a specialty store. Here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I'm thinking. Because... You need the problem with a lot of these movie rental houses is that their sole source of revenue is the rental market. No right? Funko Pops. Mm-hmm. There are no I mean, Funko no. Pops. 
Yeah. Wait, are you saying they don't have Funko Pops? No, or we just no, refuse I'm to sell a, Funko I'm Pops. I'm making a stand yeah, right here. Them, no Funko Pops. Them. Well, then Greg Miller's out because if you don't sell fucking <laughs> obscure Funko Pops of the th- of Superman that he's bought five times, he's not coming to that thing. <laughs> Which honestly, bonus, right? Um, what I'm saying is they always have these movie rental houses, these places. And they're always like, our primary source of income is rentals. So you have to make it like, you got to do what Alamo Draft House did, which is like the, their primary source, I guarantee, is the bar and the, the food that they're bringing in, right? So what if, Joey, you mm-hmm. walked into I Love Video, but it's mm-hmm. actually like a low-key cool restaurant that you have like oh, good like food, that. hipster style food at, but in and amongst everything else, you actually have deep like things you can rent. And then we play movies there, almost like a jukebox. So if you like... If you want to like, okay, I want to watch Back to the Future, you pay like f- like two bucks, it starts, but then if someone else wants to interrupt the movie, they pay like three bucks and they can put on Casino or, Royale. Over oh, and, and over you, again. it's like a war Ooh, between or, the tables. Or I like, I like that, but like what if it is more like a jukebox in terms of songs where – you're playing famous clips from these movies. Yeah, that'd be fun. Like the, mm. like the scene, oh, right? Yeah. The scene yeah. from the movie where oh. it's like, do you want to play the scene in Batman where he breaks through the skylight and saves yeah. Vicky Vale? And it, it stops right after Jack Nicholson goes, where does he get those wonderful toys? And it's like, oh, that'd be really fun to do. The or it's se- like the sequence from Hot Fuzz where they're driving away and he shoots up into the air. <laughs> like, yeah, <it's> like, ah, <laughs> super great. We watched uh, we watched uh, Spider Man two yesterday. We did the in review with that. Uh, and uh, man, that last sequence, movie, whatever. But that last part where she goes, "Go get him, Tiger." That would have to be the that would be the the, the title of that Spider Man two. Go get him, Tiger. Where it's just that <laughs> sequence. That could be really really fun, ladies and gentlemen. This. Has been your kind of funny podcast for this week. Thank you uh, to Andy for running this and uh, for Snowbike Mike for filling in uh, for Tim and Joey, of course, for joining us as always. Always fun to get everyone's perspective on stuff and hear some new voices. Uh, we love you all very much out there. And if you're a Patreon member, hey, hang on, because we're about to head into your Patreon only exclusive post show right now. <laughs> 